There is a continuum preset called car plus basic in the building block category that everybody should be aware of because it's a sophisticated instrument in its own right. It can be used to model all kinds of plucked string sounds from a pizzicato string to an electric guitar and all kinds of ethnic string instruments in between. And with a little bit of knowledge of what's going on here, you can tweak it in various ways and get some really great sounds. Uh, Christophe Duquesne created this continuum-based implementation of the famous Car Plus Strong physical model of a pluck string. This was developed in the early 1980s as one of the first computer modeling algorithms to recreate the sound of real instruments with digital techniques. The original algorithm has been enhanced over the years, and there's a related set of modeling techniques called waveguide synthesis that Christoph also has a number of examples of in the standard 8.5 firmware preset list. You should try and check those out as well. Let's take a look at the basic idea behind the Car Plus Strong algorithm and how it was modeled on the continuum. Now, fortunately, we really don't have to know much about the math behind the algorithm or computer programming to easily see how it's recreated in the Egan matrix. But first, let's take a step back and think about why a pluck stringed instrument sounds the way it does. Consider a cello pizzicato, for example. When you pluck a string, you impart an initial burst of energy and excite it into motion. At that point of initial plucking, the string has its highest energy content and the high harmonics ring out, as well as the lower ones, of course. But the string will quickly lose energy, and as a consequence, the higher harmonics die out first. And as the string continues to lose energy, the higher harmonics all fade away, leaving the lower ones to sound until all the energy is gone, and then the string stops vibrating and becomes silent. Of course, with a plucked cello by itself, this can happen very quickly. So I'll bring up a spectral analyzer here. Also, play a few sampled cello pizzicato tones, and we'll see what that looks like. Now, this is a real cello that's been sampled. The lower harmonics are still hanging around after the higher ones have died out, but this happens so quickly you can't really tell very much. So now let's play the Car Plus Basic algorithm. very close and you can see those high harmonics have died away and the lower one is still there dying out as the sound fades away all right let's take a look at what this is really doing I have an example here of the algorithm itself you can find examples of this on the internet all over the place but basically the idea is you start with a burst of noise or some kind of short tone that has a full spectrum sound and that is fed into a basically a control loop some of it goes to the output and also it's fed back in on itself through a digital delay through a delay line and that delay then gets sent through a very shallow low-pass filter that loops back on itself where some of it goes out again and then the other just keeps looping in this feedback path around and around on itself until the sound dies away because remember we're, we're not holding our finger down and creating a long tone we're creating a burst of noise or a tone burst that dies away very very quickly and what's left is the sustaining sound of the tone going around this feedback loop now a couple things to be aware of when we try and implement this in the Egan matrix the first thing is we need a very shallow filter. If we use a filter that has a cutoff that's too steep, things are going to basically contort and not going to get the sound we want. The way to do that is to use the Egan Matrix single pole filter, which is a very shallow filter, and that works very nicely. Now in terms of the delay line, we have a voice delay that we're going to send this through in the Egan Matrix. And the only thing we need to worry about there is we started with a pulse of noise. How do we get a tone out of this? And as it turns out, playing with the delay time or the number of samples in this delay, from our perspective, the time is going to affect the pitch. And so we're going to scale that delay value in a way using the X parameter so that we can actually use the fingerboard to play notes. So here's the basic steps that we need to create our algorithm in the Egan matrix. 
we need to create a shape generator and set that to a fast time. We'll actually use a barrel on that because we can get a little bit of tone control this way. Then we have to send noise into a low pass filter and use this shape generator on W to set to a pulse. And in that way, we're going to create our noise pulse. That noise pulse gets sent into a voice delay. We'll set to 50 milliseconds, the minimum value. And then the output of the voice delay gets sent into a single pole low pass filter. We'll set the center frequency of that to a barrel for tone control as well. And we'll set the delay time in this case to some small fraction like 0.25 just for testing. We'll scale that later. Then the output of that single pole filter goes to the main outputs. And we'll put a formula on that with a multiplier on Z that lets us easily control volume. Then we'll route the output of the single pole filter back to the voice delay input for that filter bank. And that'll give us that nice control loop that will successively send that noise around that control loop. And every time it goes through, it'll take a little bit of the highs off through that shallow filter. And that'll give us that plucked response that we're looking for. Finally, we need to tune this thing to the fingerboard, and we can use a little bit of math there if we want to get discrete tones out. The way it works is that 50 millisecond period, if I set delay to the full time, 50 milliseconds works out to be 20 hertz, and you can use that kind of a formula to get any pitch you want, but we're going to want to scale this to X with a formula. Finally, I should say that it's very difficult to scale the full fingerboard correctly in pitch with this algorithm. It's going to be a little bit out of pitch as you go way high. And finally, talking about pitch, the one thing you need to understand, I need these values to get smaller as pitch gets higher. For example, if I have a pitch I want to get out of 220 hertz, that has a period of about 4.5454 milliseconds. If I do a division of that by 50 milliseconds, the value that I need to plug in for the delay is something like 0.0909. And I need these small values to get even smaller as I get higher. So let's start with a clean slate and create our pulse of noise. And we'll do this in a configurable way. We'll create a formula. We're going to set this to a value of 90. And then we'll set an offset on that of 10. So our value will go from 10 to 100. And I'm going to set a barrel. We'll call it speed. And that will control the formula that I just created. We'll set that to barrel 1. And now I'm going to use that as the input to my shape generator, the frequency input. I'll gate that with W as normal. And very important now, I want to set this to single cycle because I only want to create one single pulse. And after that, I'm going to let the delay do all the work. If I set this to continuous, I'll be repeating this thing over and over and over again, which is fine under some conditions. But remember, this is going to all be going through a delay loop. So if I'm holding my finger down and I'm continuing to trigger this through this loop, I could create an overload. Now I'll take this and I will use another formula, B, as the noise input to a low-pass filter. I'm going to set that to my shape generator, and I'm going to set that to the pulse value. Then I'm going to set this to its value. I know that one will work in this case because it's a single pulse of noise. If this has been a constant noise source, this one would have been way too loud. And again, if you're not sure what you're doing, take that gain down. Now for the cutoff frequency, We'll create another formula because we want that to be variable. This can actually change the tone, as you'll see. We'll call that tone 1. And we're going to take another formula for that C. And we'll set that to the second barrel. And we want this to go, say, from 1 kilohertz. So we'll set this from 1 to about 12 kilohertz. So we'll set this to 11. OK. And then we're going to set that as the cutoff frequency. And our bandwidth, we can just set to 1. Now to test this, I've got a pulse of noise coming out of here. What I'll do is I will send this to the outputs number 5. That's our filter bank. So let me just gate this on W. And we should hear now a pulse of noise as I press the fingerboard. That's exactly what we got. That could be a little bit too loud, but... I set it that way so you could hear it. So that's our pulse. I press the fingerboard and hold it. 
and I get a single pulse out. Hard to believe that's going to become a plucked string sound, but that's exactly what's going to happen. Next, I want to get rid of this output because that's not where I want to send this noise. I want to send this noise into the voice delay. So I'll send the full value, the unity value of that, into a voice delay. And as we said, I'll just set this to a small value for testing of 0.25 right now. Then that voice delay gets set into a single pole low pass filter. So I'll create that on my filter bank number four. I'll send the output of bank C into that low pass filter. And I'm going to create another barrel because this is going to give me actually my main tone control. And I'll set another formula. And let's say I'll do something similar on this one. I'll set this to my third barrel. And let's say I want this to go from, again, let's let's say 1 kilohertz to 10 kilohertz, or 11 in this case. And we'll set that to my single pole low pass filter, which doesn't take uh, bandwidth in this case. And then the next step is to send the output of that filter, bank 4, to the main outputs. And we can create another formula for this. For now, we'll use a multiplier of 1 times Z, and we'll send that to the outputs on 4E. What we might want to do is actually start this a little higher because I don't want to start at zero. I want a little bit of that to always be present. Then the important thing is I also send the output of this low pass filter back in on itself through the voice delay. Now I should have what I need. What I'll do is I will turn off the loop of the voice delay and see what it sounds like. There's our pulse of noise. It's not really feeding back through itself on that delay loop yet. So I'm still hearing that pulse of noise. But what happens when I turn on that loop? Wow. Well, I've only set this to one value on the uh, frequency content of the delay, so I'm only going to get that one value. But if I set that to half its value, it's an octave higher. And to also show you that the delay value affects the pitch, I can set this delay value from 50 to 100 and it should get an octave lower. All right? Kind of cool, right? Setting that delay value is how I set pitch on this algorithm. So that's the basics of setting this thing up. And I can now change these values around to get nice changes in tone. Now another thing you can be aware of is this is taking a while to go through that loop. If I change the input to this voice delay just a little bit, let me, let me make this say 0.95 instead of the 1. I'm holding my finger down here. That sound is being damped much quicker. So if you don't like the delay that's on it, you can set the input to the voice delay down just a little bit to get a much more staccato kind of pluck. Now the only thing left for us to do is to set the pitch scaling so that I can play something with this on the fingerboard. As you can see, I've made a few refinements here. I changed the first barrel to say shape generator attack instead of speed. That's a little more meaningful. I set it to a barrel type that says long attack to short attack and set it to a value of about 50. There you can see down there. I've used tone fine and tone gross as more meaningful names. And on the gross tone adjustment, I've set a barrel going from dull to bright, which is again a little more meaningful. And I've added another barrel here that has a dampening function on the voice delay input. I set this from 1 down to 0.8 with that barrel. As I increase this, it's going to add this negative number, obviously going from 1 down to 0.8. And that'll let me get a very quick attack. My finger's on the fingerboard here. 
and that tone dies away very quickly. Obviously, if I go down to the lowest setting, it'll take a long time for that tone to go away when my finger's on the fingerboard. Now, I don't want just one pitch coming out. Let's change this 0.25 steady pitch to something that's going to let us use the fingerboard the way we want to. Well, let's create a formula, G, and let's set it to just X, as we might expect, to track the fingerboard. We'll put G in there. What is going to happen? Let me play up the fingerboard. Whoa! So that's not going to work, because we said before we need the numbers in the uh, voice delay to get smaller as I go higher. Well, one thing I could do is simply invert this. That should make things go in the opposite direction. Hey! That seems to work okay, but if I play a G on the fingerboard, it's not coming out of G. Things are not scaled right due to this algorithm. Let's see what this really is. I think it's more like a B-flat. <laughs> yeah, it's a B-flat. Well, what can I do? I can multiply by some offset, but we have this wonderful little function here that lets me change my offset by note. So if I'm on a G that's really a B-flat and I want it to be a G, I need this to go up a third, that will make me go down in reality. And so now when I play, that does seem lower. A G. Hey, that's all I really need to do. Now my only problem is, this is maybe not in the range that I want. I set this to the fourth octave here. It defaults to the fifth. If I'd have left it there, I'm going to go way out of range very quickly. And if I have a full fingerboard, I could have some problems here. So this carpless algorithm is not going to scale very well for a full fingerboard. You're going to want to use it in a range that makes sense. And if I want to use it in more in a bass range, maybe I'll set it there. If I want everything to be a little higher, maybe I'll set it here. So I can play around with that, and I think I like it here for my half unit. The only thing is, as I play these notes, they're in tune for a few octaves, and then they kind of go out a little bit as they get higher due to the nature of the algorithm and the processor itself and how things are working. So. I found that this algorithm is good if you want to stay around in a three octave range. Things seem to be okay. That's one way to do it. Another way, and the way that Christoph does in his version of this, is he sets this to a X function like this. We'll set that back to C. I think, I believe it's set to a zero octave here, the way the scaling works. And he'll set this to an invert then multiply. And then there's an offset that he uses on that to make it come out right as a multiplier. And let's see, something like that. I think that's what the original uh, car plus basic does for the X scaling. Let's see what note that is. That's about right. But um, I think I like the way I did it, too. Play around with it. See what you like. But either way, you're going to have to do something to scale your voice delay. Well, this has gone on long enough, but I still have one gen left. So let's see if we can do something interesting and make this a little bit of our own, since it's really just the same preset Christoph created, packaged a little differently. Let's try this. Create a formula, H. We'll stick it on another low-pass filter, and we'll copy B into that. So we'll duplicate what we did before. We'll put C and 1. We'll just duplicate that. But what we're going to do is, on H, instead of having a pulse that starts at the beginning, we'll have a pulse that starts at the end. And if we time this just right, we should be able to create a configurable double strike. 
that can be really nice. What we'll do also is we'll take another formula and we'll copy in A to that and create another shape generator just like the one before and we're going to attach that shape generator to our new low pass filter that's getting noise in just like the first one did. So we're going to attach shape generator 2 to that. This will be configured with the same frequency content that we had before. We can just change it a little bit differently than we're using on the initial one to get that double strike and change the amount of time between the double strike. Now all we need to do is take our output of this low pass filter like we did before and send that into the delay as well. Though I don't want to send that in at the same volume. We want our double strike to be a little bit less. So maybe let's try sending this in. We're on the third filter bank here. So let's try sending that in at say 0.5. And what we'll do is also on H, we don't want that. We'll half the value for the noise coming in on that. So now what we have to do is create our gen and we'll call that dbl strike and we need to set the control of this second value which also has to be set to single cycle to our gen now let's play something Ooh, i can hear that double strike i'm at the low value of my frequency here if i bring that up I should. Get to a point where I'm almost indistinguishable. So there's a simple thing we can do to take the original preset and make it ours.